Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a thrift lit video where I take items I have recently thrifted and upcycle them to more my style. The projects in today's video will not only be great for spring, but for a year around. I think y'all gonna enjoy this video, so let's get started on the projects. I thrifted these two baking pans and I liked that they were two different sizes. I like the texture on the top and the bottom of them and I really liked the hardware on them. I sprayed them with a coat of white primer and now I want to paint them using the baking soda and paint technique. I don't want it to be too thick so this time instead of using half and half I'm going to use a little bit more paint and a little bit less baking soda. This paint will definitely make it look less like a baking pan and more like a piece of pottery. I'm gonna put two coats of paint on both the pans inside and out, and then I'm going to seal it with Rust-Oleum clear coat in a matte finish. I just absolutely love this painting technique. It gives so much texture and so much character to each piece that I put it on. Now I'm gonna take this old wooden spindle that I had in my stash and I'm gonna make a tiered tray. I knew when I saw these two pans in two different sizes that they would make the perfect tiered tray. I'm just using a combination of Gorilla Glue and hot glue to put all the pieces together. And after I show y'all the final reveal, hang on because I have one more project I wanna show y'all with these baking pans. I always pick up these glass domes when I find them at the thrift store. You can always make a base or find something to use. Look how perfectly it fits on top of here. Y'all will not even believe how cute this looks styled up. I thrifted this plastic tier tray. It is missing the bottom tier, but that is no big deal because actually all I want is the pieces in the middle. So I'm gonna take it apart and then what I wanna do is paint the pieces because they have you know this glossy white plastic look to it. So I'm gonna take the baking soda and paint mixture that I made and I am just going to give these a coat of paint and this will definitely give them a much more high-end upscale look. I went into my huge stash of baskets and I found three baskets that I thought would work perfectly for this tier tray. Now the top smaller basket already had a nice hole in the middle but the other two did not. So I'm just gonna take my drill and put a drill in the center of these baskets. As you can see, all the baskets are different colors. So what I did was I added some antiquing wax and some water together, and I am just going to brush that on top of all these baskets. Now, they will still have a slight variation in color, but they will definitely look much more cohesive after adding this mixture to all three baskets. The bottom tray has handles, so I decided to paint it with the same paint that I painted the middle pieces because I thought it would tie in nicely together. Okay, now I'm ready to put all the pieces together. The bottom piece just had a screw, so I took that out and I put it on my bottom basket and I started to screw it in and I realized that this part of the basket was a little bit too thick that it was not fitting. So what I did was I just ended up cutting the two pieces that were getting in the way. It did not mess with the integrity of the basket at all, but it gave me enough room to firmly screw in that piece. And then I just added the other two baskets with no issues because these were much thinner and fit perfectly. So definitely if you see tear trays at the thrift store, even if they're broken, grab them because you can use the pieces to make your own tear tray very easily.
I thrifted this birdhouse because I liked how tall it was and how it had two different levels and these two little drawers. It did have some crackling in the paint. So before I repainted it, I just wanted to give it a light sanding just to get off all that paint that was chipping away. I also purchased this riser at the thrift store for I believe $2.99 and I actually want to attach it to the bottom of my birdhouse. So I'm going to use a combination of Gorilla Glue that is going to permanently hold it and some hot glue so that way it'll stick right now and I can move on to the next step in this project. I want to make these two pieces that I just put together look like one bigger piece. So I'm going to paint the entire thing with white paint. I'm going to put two coats of paint on here and then I'm going to lightly distress it with some 220 grit sandpaper. I really wanted to add some wood tone elements to this birdhouse. So I just cut out some five millimeter underlayment to the same size as the roof. And I want it to be a little bit more darker, a little bit more aged. So I'm just adding some water down antiquing wax to my pieces of wood. And once my paint is all dry, I'm going to hot glue the wood pieces to the top of my birdhouse. Now for the fun part, we can start embellishing this birdhouse. So I took the bigger drawer and I'm just hot gluing some foam to the bottom front of it. And then I'm just going to add in these sprigs of greenery that I purchased from Walmart. I think these little pink flowers will just look so cute with the look I'm going for on this house. Next, I'm gonna add some embellishments using the IOD Alpha Belly stamp. I really love this stamp because it works with all their font stamps, but it also has all this cute floral on it that you can use on its own. I'm using the China blue color and I had it on the thin mount, but I realized that wasn't gonna work, so I had to do it by hand. And I only put a tiny bit of ink on here because I want it to really have a distressed faded look. Actually, this was a little bit too bright for me. So once my ink was dry, I actually went back with some 220 grit sandpaper and sanded these stamps down a little bit more. I just wanted to have a very faded, worn look. And after I finished putting the stamps on, I felt like this birdhouse was done. When I saw this ceramic piece at the thrift store, I knew I had to have it. I mean, it's so cute. It's a bunch of little birds on a branch. However, I am not in love with the color of it, but that is okay because we can easily fix that with some paint. My friend Jackie over at Ruth and Ruby sent me this Dixie Belle paint in the color buttercream. It's kind of like a pretty off white color. I'm going to paint this ceramic piece with two coats of this paint. And of course, I'll have a link in the description below for y'all. These birds actually look very beautiful, just simple and white, but I want to give this piece a more aged distressed look. So using a combination of 220 grit sandpaper and a wet rag, I'm going to distress back some of those details on this piece. I love the chippy look that the combination of the sandpaper and the wet distressing created on here. But for my personal taste, there's just too much of a color difference between the dark colors underneath and the white paint. So what I wanna do to just tone it down slightly is to add some white wax. So I am going to put white wax on the entire piece. However, I'm not gonna wipe it off. I'm gonna leave it on there and that'll just kind of tone this down and bring all the colors together, but it'll still have that A chippy look.
I love using birds not only in my own home but a lot in my designs. So although these two birds are very cute as is, I have a plan for them. I want them to look old and rusty and crusty so I'm going to put a layer of black chalk paint on them. Then I'm going to come back with a layer of the antiquing wax and then I'm going to add a little cinnamon. The combination of these three, three things definitely give brand new pieces this old aged rusty look. Once I sprinkle the cinnamon on, I just kind of rub it into the antiquing wax using my fingers and I will seal this up with a clear coat and that'll keep everything in place. I thrifted this glass piece. It was 99 cents. I'm assuming it is from some kind of light fixture, but it has a flat top. And I also have this little cutoff spindle. I never throw away these little cutoffs because you never know when you might need it for a project. Using a combination of hot glue and Gorilla Glue, I'm going to attach the bird to the glass. And this is going to make a beautiful antique looking cloche. And then I'm going to attach my bird to the spindle and y'all. This is the most adorable piece of decor. I'm definitely gonna have to find more birds to do this because I am obsessed with how this piece came out. I thrifted a bunch of these flat round baskets. I think they were originally hot plates, but I'm going to turn them into some wall art. I had a viewer ask me how to do a whitewash on a basket, so I wanted to do a quick tutorial on that. All you need to do is mix up whatever white paint you want. I am actually just using latex paint and some water. This is about a half and half mixture. Now, if you wanted to use a color, it would be the same thing, about half paint, half water. Okay, you see how when I apply it on here, it is not going into the creases of the basket and that is really what you want. So what I did was I added some more water. You really want to have enough water to where it goes easily into all the little creases and textures of your basket. I'm just going to continue to paint the entire piece and it's going to give it a really nice whitewash look. Now, if you wanted it to be more translucent than this, then you would add a lot more water and just a little bit of paint. So it's just whatever look that you are going for. I have done transfers on baskets before. However, I have not done one on a basket with so much texture. So I figured we would just experiment and see if this worked out. I am using this sheep image from the IOD Brocant transfer book. It is definitely my favorite transfer book at the moment. I have used it for so many different projects. It is coming off very easily. I am kind of shocked even the tiny type on the bottom is coming off onto the basket. I have a lot more of these baskets and a lot more ideas. So you may see these baskets on future videos, but I thought it would just look so pretty with an image right in the middle. You want to pull off that plastic piece very slowly. That way, if you see any pieces haven't adhered, you can put it back down and rub it on. Some of the transfer is just kind of sitting on top of the basket and I really want it to be in the grooves of the basket. So I'm just going back and lightly rubbing with my finger and kind of pushing it into the grooves. Now this will tear up your transfer a little, but I liked the way that it looks. You do want to go back and seal it with a liquid top coat. And if you don't want your transfer to tear, then do not rub on it and just simply put your top coat and that'll make sure everything sticks to the basket and you will not have any issues. All right guys, I really hope that y'all enjoy today's video. 
Do not forget to leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project that I created today. And if you enjoy this sort of content, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I post DIY, haul, thrifting, home makeover videos every single week. Y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in the next video.